stop you because it was very, very funny because you played beautifully, you're gorgeous, and everybody's moved by your beauty of your sound. But it was very amusing. You played your phrase, and then Dina, who's well trained, I must say, in the, the world of my, my way of thinking about music, she played it quite differently. And then you came to your bit and you said, I don't take any interviews, so I'm going to go on doing my way. <laughs> so this is what Dina's doing, and I want to share this with you. She's not feeling it by the note, she's feeling it by the bar. She's feeling each bar like a beat. Very, very, very important idea that in music, it's organized not according to beats, but according to bars, and usually in four bar phrases. So first bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar. And she understands that, and she instinctively went into that mode. And, but you've been learning it note by note. Okay. So let me explain to you what the way to think of it. This is one impulse that takes you over two bars, and then another impulse that takes you over two bars, and then the next impulse takes you over four bars. Right, you get that? And you think of each bar as one beat. Now, there's a very interesting thing. Just do that. Just do that idea to... That's right. That, that's exactly what, what I mean. Now, there's a very interesting additional factor. The music goes up and lands on an appoggiatura, which you know well means to lean on the note. The natural tendency of a musician when the music goes up and it goes to an appoggiatura is to treat it like an upbeat. But actually, it isn't an upbeat. The first bar is always the heavy bar, except with very few exceptions. Like the first bar of the Brahms Second Symphony is an, up, is an upbeat. But that's very, very rare. Most pieces begin at the beginning. So now, what I want you to do is do exactly what you did, put the emphasis on the one and carry you through to two bars. But the impulse comes from the one. Then you put another impulse on the one here, and then the third one goes all the way. Here we go, two, and... she leads to you. beautiful and here there's no doubt because the music falls so naturally this is a weak this is a heavy bar this is a weak bar heavy bar weak bar here it's complicated because the music goes up so you think it must be the opposite but it isn't just do this one more time this phrase to and it falls to now the heavy one second time it falls now the third one is different different one and 
Everything is in one. It's like an uh, Italian opera aria, isn't it wonderful? Mm -hmm. And now you're free, and now she's free, and you agree. <laughs> isn't that great? <laughs> and we have to stop because it's 12. There's no other reason, otherwise they'd love to go on. One more phrase, and then we'll stop. One more phrase. Yeah. <laughs> You've got it. You've got it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, again, again, Dina, Dina in this, like the orchestra, is not an accompanist. She sets up the possibility for your song and gives you the freedom because of the way she understands the phrasing. And that's so important to find. To find a pianist who understands it, to train a pianist to under who understands it, so that you can make music like that. It feels great, doesn't it? It's very good feeling. It's a very good feeling. So thank you, Dina. <laughs> 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 You know, what we're, what we're talking about here this morning is the grammar of music. This is not left to chance. These things are built into the system. They're built into the system that the, when the pianist ends the phrase one, two, three, four, five, six, one, in order to set up the next phrase. That's the grammar of music. And we can learn that. And that's what we're doing here on Saturday mornings. We're learning the grammar of music so that we can pass it on to the next generation and everybody can can make the music sound because when it's right, when, it f when it's right, it feels so moving, isn't it? So touching and so beautiful. That's our job, to serve the composers, to enable them to have their music sound the way they hear it. That's a very, very important role to be playing. And thank you for being here and 
exploring this with us together. It's great. And we're keeping it on, on film so that we can make a little body of, of, of literature about musical interpretation. That's what we're doing here. It's pretty exciting. Pass on to the next generation. Because you can't write this stuff down. There are no books. You cannot do it in a book. You have to do it in the actual moment of performing it. You can't explain it. You just have to shape it. And when you hear, like with the clarinet just now, or with the beautiful, with the E minor cello sound, you hear it, you say, yes, I see, that's how it goes. Then you can get it. It's wonderful. So I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity. And I have to tell you, we were not going to hold the, the class today because I got back yesterday from Malaysia and uh, we have a rehearsal this afternoon with Siegfried and, and the people aren't here and we didn't have a place to do it and we thought, oh, we shouldn't do it. And then said, no, let's do it. <laughs> I'm so glad we did it. <laughs>